Hello all, hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. You know, don't you? You know. Right, we're going to go balls deep now. Porky and Terry go large. That's what we're going to call this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got some questions here for you, Terry. Uh, we'll get stuck straight in, no messing about. Tony Bellew. Bean, Eddie Earn or Eddie Hills, we call him now, uh, Spencer Oliver, uh, Johnny Nelson, all analytics up on interviews in the last six months. Even Frank Warren, I'm talking like between 45% and nearly 90%. Are they overkilling it or are they just trying to make boxing relevant? Because people are putting stuff out every single day now, aren't they? It's. But Russ, where, where where was all this stuff in May? Where was all this stuff in June? Where were all of these numbers in June and July? No, no. Oh, you know, and it's not like we're talking about big fights at the moment. We haven't had any big fights in this country. Like Jesus, like the Americans are so far ahead of us right now. Yeah. So oh, yeah. where have all these numbers come from? You you got promoters talking about fights we don't care about. So where are the numbers coming from? But like I told you, these numbers aren't real. And yeah. That there are enough people that listen to this. That why are you not asking people what what why are the numbers so variable when every other sport seems to be stable? Uh, it's <laughs> boxing's got so much wrong with it, and boxing fans just accept it because, to be honest, they know no better. But if you're the people keeping the sport going, you need to ask these hard questions. Where are these numbers coming from? If Eddie Hearn is so popular, where's his TV show? Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, mate, yeah. yeah. I see where you're coming from. Uh, yeah, right, uh, question two. Frank's upped his game, if you've noticed, with interviews and um, putting himself out there and that. Do you feel that he's now having to take a leaf out of Eddie's book, getting himself out there, promoting himself and his fighters? Because, for example, Tyson Fury's done nearly 500 videos since he fought Wilder. This is on the analytics. If it's all there, people go look. Now, that's more than one a day interview, and he's not even got a fight lined up. Frank, it's very rare you get Frank doing interviews, and he never puts himself out there, but he's put himself out there a lot lately, but you don't see Yard and Boatsy doing this, do you? This constant out there every single day. They're not like that. Jose Burton, he's not like that. And there's others that are not like that as well. Why, why do you think Frank's all of a sudden... <laughs> Out a lot. So, so the difference is, if you look at Anthony Yard, he does a lot on his own channels. And remember, he's he's an Adidas guy. He Anthony Yard promotes himself, right? Yeah. Because he knows boxing's just a platform for him to then go on and do bigger and better things. And so, he's one of the few guys that sussed it out. I think Watts is the opposite. He's just a low key guy. So he he's a guy that wants to do all of his talking in the ring. But the problem with that is you don't necessarily get the riches you deserve. They like and... Callum Smith. Hmm? They like Callum Smith. He doesn't really speak, but he did his talking at ring and, he's, and obviously he got paid, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So, now, so why would Frank be making noise? I think the truth is he realises he can't deliver any big fights anytime soon. Yeah. So he's the only guy with enough of a profile to keep spinning this Queensbury BT Sport story along. You know, you know, can you imagine Steve Bunce on an IFL interview? I can't. Do you see what I mean? So Frank's, Frank's pretty much his own, like, like Eddie is. Eddie can't trust people to do the stuff that he can do. And I think it's the same with Frank. Yeah, he's up to his game, Frank, and he? Good luck to him, old brick top. Right. Uh, Bradis, Taylor, Ergovic, Edwards, Burton and Yoka all four at weekend. What did you think to the Bradis fight? Mate, didn't even watch it. I'm not going to lie to you. I was, out, I was out yesterday, so I've tried to catch up on stuff. So I've seen the highlights of it. Uh, expected result. Um, as, as, as good as Dorticos is, there were always questions around Dorticos when things would get tough. I don't think there were the same questions around Braders. I also think, you know, had the fight been anywhere other than Latvia, it might have been a closer fight, but when you got, I mean, you got home turf advantage. Yeah, I thought it went the way that it was supposed to go, and you suspect by having the fight in Latvia, that's where the Saulans wanted it to go anyway. 
Yeah, all right. Josh Taylor against the guy who uh, Dennis has made. Scott, Dennis nearly signed him. Uh, I don't know if Dennis has got a piece of him, because we're not talking at the moment. But, uh, Why are you falling out with Dennis again? We have a fallout once a year, don't we? We've had about five in five years. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. I don't know. No, I, yeah, when I see Den now, you know, you know, the, the lockdown's changed him, Porky. He's thinking differently. <laughs> what? What about drivings and that in Aldi car park on Manor Top, Sheffield? Hey, man, I'm all, I'm all over that, man. Manor Top, where you used to get chased if you weren't white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about uh, Josh Taylor knocked him out in one round with a body shop? People are saying it were fixed. They're now saying Josh Taylor's an ice man, but... The guy he's just fought were basically shocking, wasn't he? So, this comes back to something I said on one of my episodes a while ago, Porky. And what I basically said was, coming out of this lockdown, you're going to see a lot of people getting hurt to the body because it takes years to build up resistance to body shots. It takes years. And if you haven't done anything for six months, if you've been in a lockdown, you basically become a civilian again. You know, and those body shots hurt. Now, I don't know if he'd prepared properly for it. I heard Ben Davidson say something about his waist being narrow and they exploited that. Not sure. But what I can say is that punch that Taylor threw, that, that left hook to the body, shouldn't be putting down a professional boxer. I don't care what anyone says. You'll never convince me otherwise. No professional boxer fighting for a world title should go down from that shot. Like, there was no... It didn't even look like like it didn't even look like Josh had ripped into it. it. Just like he tapped him, and the guy went down. So that 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 results a bit suspect to me. I'm not going to say it's a fix, but I don't feel right about how that fight ended. You know what Frotch once said to me years ago? I'm not going to say which fight you are. A guy went down from a body shot. He said, "What's he doing? Getting took out there by a body shot?" He said, "Fighters at this level should not be going down." after they've been hitting the body, they're doing something wrong. That's what he said to me. It's always stuck in my mind, that. Always stuck in my mind. And I saw something Floyd Mayweather said about fighters getting took out with body shots, you know, some, a while ago. Like, you know, I, I think it was after he beat that uh, General Hernandez, I saw him say, around about that time, he'd say yeah. about a guy getting took out with a body shot. He says, if world champion fighters or world contenders should not be getting stopped by body shots. What do you think about that? That's true. You, well, if you're going to get stopped by a body shot, at least break a couple of ribs. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. That, that's when I'm like, okay, yeah. At the top level, it's going to take you breaking my ribs to stop me with a body shot. I understand that. But getting hit to the liver, uh, it happened with Macklin, didn't it, when, when Golovkin got him to the liver? Yeah. And, and I can forgive that. But that punch that Taylor threw... I was just like, nah, 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 come on, man. Not, not that punch. I'm not buying it. Yeah. All right. Then. Ergovic won, but he wasn't really in with anybody any good, worry. Nah. He's, he's a dark horse, but I think as long as you've got guys like Yoka, Dubois, and Joyce, that I think Ergovic is just one of the pack. I think had he come through maybe three years ago, yeah. I think he'd, he'd, be a, he'd be a bigger threat now, but he's... He's in with a lot of killers, like of his generation. There are a lot of killers there. Uh, your nemesis's brother fought Charlie Edwards. Wait, wait, hold no, no. Let's talk about Yoka. We didn't talk about Yoka. Yeah, we're going to come to Yoka. He's not. Let's go on. And Tony Yoka. What a performance! Like, like I know people say De Harpers is thirty nine and da 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 da. Gatekeeper, isn't he? Yeah, if if you can beat De Harpers. Like, I still think if you put that, that version of Duarte in with, like, a Dubois, that goes three or four rounds at least. Yeah. So, for Yoka to do what he did was impressive. And what I like about Yoka, Porky, is he boxes like a light heavyweight. So, he throws a lot of really creative combinations. And so, when you're a big heavyweight, used to just hiding behind a high guard and going, Joe, if I cover up, I'll be all right. Yoka basically punches every hole that you've left. So he'll come around the side, he'll hit you to the body, he'll come up the middle with the uppercut, and then just when you think he's going to come around the side again, he'll just hit you with a straight shot. And I think De Harper's just thought, you know what, I'm too old for this, man. I'm just getting battered. And if you remember, Dave Allen said Yoke is one of the hardest people he's been in with, probably yeah, after Ortiz, I think. So Dave said when he were not train, Euro train up way back, his head were ringing. Yeah, I think 
I think Yoka's special. He's six seven, but he's really, really narrow in the shoulders, unlike Joshua. So you know that like, they're the same weight, I think. And you know that he's just super dense. And I always like fighters that are dense. Like, you're about mm? 240. Uh, Yo could be about 245, 247. Yeah. He's a lump, isn't he? I not like a clout yeah. off him. But yeah, yeah, and he looks the part. Yeah, he does look the part. Clean cut kid. You can see Eddie Earn signing him down the line, can't you? And then He's with Bob Arum. So yeah. good luck, Eddie. I know, good luck, yeah. Good luck, Eddie. Evening, Eddie. Uh, Edwards, Charlie Edwards. Uh, I know people want me to slag Charlie off, but I can't. I, I quite like Charlie Edwards. And I'll tell you why I like Charlie. You know, Charlie, Charlie wants to fight. Now, for all of his sins and so forth, Charlie wants to fight. And I thought yesterday he tried to fight, and he tried to fight a guy who was probably bigger and stronger than he was. So the first half of the fight, you see Charlie trying to have that fight. And then the second half, Charlie just got on his bike and, you know, standard Edwards thing of just mop up the rounds and just get out of there. Yeah, yeah. But So I don't know how to feel. I, look, I'm going to say this. Like, where I've said Sonny Edwards is boring, and I stand by that, at least I want to watch a Charlie Edwards fight. I don't know if I want to watch it to see him win or to see him lose. I never really know. Yeah. But I'll always watch a Charlie Edwards fight. And if he does go down to 115, it'll be interesting to see who they put him in with. I'd quite like to see him in with Brad Foster. Mm, I would, yeah. Not Brad Foster, sorry, Tommy Frank. Brad Foster's a uh, uh, super bantam, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I mean. I thought got the wrong guy. Tommy Fra yeah. Someone like a Tommy Frank and Edwards in with Charlie. Wait, though. Hmm? Edwards has gone up to Bantamweight, so, uh, Charlie. No, nah, nah, I think that was just a one-off. He'll be back down to Superfly. Right. I'm going to say, because uh, if it's Bantamweight, Brad Foster could come down, couldn't he, a couple of a few pounds. Yeah. But I think Brad would be too big for him. I think all those guys, you know, Harvey Horn, Lucy and Reed, just let, let Charlie in with those guys. I think, I think they're going to obviously offer Sonny up to one of the Mexicans or Latin Americans at some point. Yeah. So let, yeah, let Charlie do the circuit, clean up some British names, give us some entertaining fights. And then when it's his time, he can go across the Atlantic and, you know, do what he has to do. All right, then. Uh, and the last one I want to talk about, Jose Burton. He never turned up, did he, really? Uh, I got scorecards. Uh, can you imagine playing right on way home? Tyson sat with him saying, listen, Jose, don't worry, I'll get you on undercard when I fight Big Doss of Femi. You'll be getting 15 grand and I'll be on 50 million. That'll be, it'll have been something like that, wouldn't it? Conversation on way home. <laughs> You love sticking it to the Furies, don't you, fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in ring Tyson, isn't he? In the middle of a pandemic, he's flying to Eastern Euro European uh, countries. And he's in ring. He made it about him, didn't he? Do you have to quarantine coming back from Latvia or not? I've been told you do. Two weeks. So... Let's see what happens on social media. Nobody's allowed to say anything, are they? Got, we've got, we have to keep it real, don't we? But <laughs> well, see that conversation happening, can you? Don't worry about it, Jose. Yeah? I'll have a word with MTK and Frank and Bob Adam. We'll get you on undercard. But, you and Isaac Lowe. But actually, you know what, Porky? I feel sorry for Jose Burton because... I do. I like him. He's likeable. But who has he beat? Who's his best win? He's calling Yard out on Boatsy. Who is his... Best win. No, wait, wait, hold on. When he called out Yard, he had every right to call out Yard and say, look, you know, you got, you got to deal with some British issues here and you got to deal with either me or Callum Johnson. I think that's a valid point Jose Burton's making because I think they're both like Gallagher guys, weren't they? They're going to be thrown under, but it's going to be, it's going to be fed to Yard and Boatsy now, isn't it, by Tesco Joe? Uh, he'll be fed to Boatsy. I think, I think that Boatsy needs that fight just to get the British names on his record because if you look at his record, who? Uh, jo well, Joshua Boatsy could have... Well, yeah, so, so look, I look at guys like Dan Aziz. Dan Aziz has beaten all of his domestic rivals. Maybe Craig Richards to come, yeah. but he's done what he's... I mean, Andre Sterling, been in with all those guys. Craig Richards, been in with British rivals. Uh, you know, even Jose Burton has been in with British rivals. Bullioni's been in with British rivals. Boatsy seems to have just sort of gone up 
the rankings having not had these big British fights. Yeah. And no one asks any questions, right? You never see on social media people going, why hasn't Boatsy fought a decent domestic opponent? The same thing they were hammering Yard about, if you remember. Yeah, I know what you mean, mate, yeah. Yeah, and Yard's obviously... I think Yard's the real deal. Yard and Boatsy, for me, for us, for us boys, it's a wet dream, isn't it, for us, that fight, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd like to see Boatsy in with someone like a London Arthur. Well, maybe in about a year, if, they've had, if they get a couple more wins on the belt. I want to see Callum Johnson, Burton, Yard and Boatsy all go at it and Lyndon Arthur. Uh, I just, like, I, I find it hard to put Boatsy in that mix and then ignore guys like Craig Richards, where Craig's put it on the line, fight after fight. Well, he's not really a 175, he's a 168, isn't he, really? No, nah, Craig's 175. Is Jesus, he? Yeah. yeah, another guy like that. Like, no, didn't he? Hmm? Fought it one six eight. He shouldn't have. Him and I, was, I remember when he first turned pro, and I said, "You're a light heavyweight," and he tried to argue with me. But he's got these. Re he's got forearms like the size of your calves, Porky. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. He's a, he's a he's a big guy. Craig Richards is a physically big guy. My calves are not very big, you know. <laughs> I heard I heard they're twenty four inches. What like Tom Platzer's? Yeah, <laughs> the quad <laughs> <laughs> Quadzilla. <laughs> Is that what they used to call him? Quadzilla, yeah. My, I've got a pal called Ian Harrison, and uh, he, he, he did. He's like, out in Miami, isn't he? He's out in Bradenton, uh, Florida, and uh, he's from West Yorkshire. And uh, he said Tom Platz's calves are off at charts, even at his age. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, all right, then moving on, moving on from Burton. I feel sorry for Burton, but maybe he's maybe maybe losing that fight gets him the fights that he wants after all. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, a bit like Jake Lamotta when he, he, he took a loss or threw a fight, it got him it mixed in it to fight for a world title. Uh, Bob Arum, the Bob Father, has done a video today, and you've probably seen it, haven't you, on IFL. No. It's the most damning video I've ever seen having a go at Eddie Hearn. Uh, it's gone viral, hasn't it, today? Regarding pay-per-view, having a go at England because they've not bought... No TV company has been in touch with him about Loma, Lopez, Kelbrook and Crawford, which have <laughs> done. So he's he stuck with them. And this is where Dennis should be nipping in with Eurosport and saying, look, we'll have some of that. You know what I mean? Bob's saying he's willing to do it at a reasonable price. He, and he's saying boxing's in a bad place. And you were saying that, weren't you, last week? Yeah. New Age Podfather with Martin and Andy, a.k.a. Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> Martin no, that, that, Starsky and other ones Hutch. No, great episode, man. It was good to be with the guys yeah, again. On that. Yeah, it were, uh, you should do two a year like that, you boys. We might do. I think, I think that's generally how we feel. Like, it's a big workload like, every Sunday, isn't it, Terry? You know yourself, don't you? We with, with your own stuff, what you do. Hour and a half each way just to record. But it's worth it to catch up with the guys. And we're, we're kind of like Fleetwood Mac. We just come out every so often. <laughs> Be like Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, come out for the money and then just hide off again. But getting back to Bob Arum, he, he's had a go at Eddie and He's set about him like... You know, listen, mate, it were like sex to me. Bob Arum's setting about Eddie Hearn. And he was saying things, what I've been saying for years. And he's saying it's up to us guys to set about, to go, to, out, to point it out. He says, Chisora Usek's not pay-per-view. Never in a million years and blah de blah He says it's pretty heavy stuff. I mean, when David A knocked Chisora out, Usek had not even fought in Olympics. <laughs> you know what I mean? Since then, I mean, Chisora's nine losses, right? And everybody said he were, he were finished then, but he were finished when he fought Fury the second time, to be honest, in my opinion. And then you've got Usek, who's been parked up two years. Been parked up two years apart from Chaz Witherspoon. Yeah. So how, how can these two, and they're both not born in the UK, I, don't, I know I like to get that in, but... Where are our UK pay-per-view stars? So we've got two guys, not born in UK, 
Derek Zimbabwe and other guys, you, uh, Ukraine. He's had one fight in two years against a nobody, and Derek's nine losses. How is this pay per view in this era of pandemic? You see where I'm coming from? We're being abused. So if we're being abused by these TV companies, why are these TV companies not buying proper fights like Loma Lopez and Kelbrook Crawford? They're the fights that we want, not your Usek Joshua, Usek Chisora and White Povetkin. What's going on? You know what, Russ? I would rather get Chisora versus Usyk free and pay for Loma versus Lopez. If, if that was the deal, uh, you're going to get this fight for free, then you're going to pay for this fight in the evening. I'd happily do that. Or, or the other way around. Either way, like if you said to me it's a double header, to, to get both of these fights on one channel, you've got to pay the pay-per-view. I, I get it, and I'd pay for Loma versus Lopez, and I think Bob will put on a reasonable card for that. Yeah. But without a good co-main event, and for me, a good co-main event, has to be competitive, right? Yeah. Like you'd have to be talking Billy Joe versus Eubank Jr., which isn't going to happen. That's a great. But you need some. Out, yeah, the, the, you need two. You need the, those two for it to be pay per view. Mm-hmm. But Bob's right. Look, think about where you're at in 2020. If you're a TV exec, you're thinking to yourself, "I probably missed out on four or five pay per views, so that's about 30 or 40 million in revenue." I can't plug that gap any other way. Like I'm still having to pay out for football and the advertisers aren't interested in being involved in, you know, half empty stadium or well, completely empty stadiums actually. And so there's all this, there's this crisis of money. So for you to stump up a million and a half for Loma Lopez, I don't, it's hard to get the sign off on that. If I'm being honest with you, it's not going to do anything for your business. That's the problem Bob's got. It's not doing anything for Sky and it's not doing anything for BT. That's why they're making you pay for really crap fights because that's the only way the fans are going to be engaged. Because really, if you offered it for free, no one would even watch it. You'd watch it the day after. Yeah, you're right, mate. You're absolutely right. Uh, Kala Sauerland says he's not much of a boxer. He's tried it, but... He's very dangerous on the pavement. What do you think to that? Well, I think you should you should test him out, Porky. I think I should test him. Yeah. Offer him one on the cobbles. I might have to go pay him a visit, what do you reckon? With camera. He, yeah. Well, offer him a fair go or all in. He has a choice. I'll take him down and maul him. There you go, you see? Porky style. We could Just... fight for, an, for a farmer's daughter of Beak. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I think you might lose that one. He's probably got the best stuff, hasn't he? Nah, man, he's probably got his own factory. <laughs> yeah, old Narcos. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, speaking of Caller, I've had a lot of emails and a lot of people saying that the UK, under the Eddie Earn here era, is like Germany under the Caller Sauerland and Willie Sauerland. You know, his dad, Big Willie. Yeah, Wilfred. Wilfred, yeah. Yeah. Uh, didn't stop him pulling uh, beautiful models and marrying them, though, did it, at his age? Ah, you know, money does wonderful things for you. Yeah. Uh, what do you think to that? The UK is the new Germany. I mean, we, we know fighters that have gone over there and been maced, aren't we, with cars. The worst one ever, Robin Reed Ockey. Then you've got Martin Murray got ripped off out there, didn't he? Uh, Macklin. But the list's endless, isn't it? Uh, do you feel that the UK is now the new, the new Berlin? The new Germany. I think it's all. I think it's always been that way. Is actually, but then, but then a lot of British guys still lose. Like, like, like you, you set it up for them to win. But a lot of these British guys still lose. And actually, on the pay per view stage, Porky, the most often outcome is the British guy loses by stoppage. So actually, it takes the judges out of the picture. Yeah, yeah. So, so the question is, why are so many British guys getting to world level and then just getting embarrassed? You know, you, you hear for years, so-and-so's world level, so-and-so's world level. Mm. And then at world level, they get stopped. And you think, that's, that's, you shouldn't be getting stopped at world level if you're really world class. Yeah. I think that's the British problem. We don't produce world class fighters, really. But Tony Bell, you're on world level. No. No, what would you say, Euro level? 
yeah, he's not world class. We name me one British boxer we've produced, Russ, who was world class in the last ten years. World class. Produced or yeah, uh, Ricky Atten was still fighting ten years ago, wasn't he? Uh, was he? He fought Senjenko in two thousand and twelve, eleven, or something like that. He come back and fought Senjenko, didn't he? I'd say yeah. Rick Carton, Carl Zaggy, Carl Froch, Amir Khan. Uh, wait, wait, wait! No, no, let's go back. Let's go back. So Ricky Hatton, yeah, world class opponents he beat, like world class opponents he beat. Uh, Costa Zoo. Washed up. Castillo. Was he really world class or was he just a guy that was like a, like a, what do you call these guys? Like Joseph Cito Lopez, a guy who kind of has his name mentioned in that crowd, but never really. Durango. Got, you know, he, who? Durango. Uh, maybe. But you see, there are too many question marks around Hatton. Mayweather stopped. Pacquiao iced at world level. All right, then Carl Froch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going to argue with that, but, but just, just, look at that, just look at that picture you're looking at, though. Who's that? Oh, it's Groves. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it, don't you, all the time, don't you? Nah, I don't know, Forky. Man. But, but for me, I, I will say Carl. For, for me, Carl, world class. Clint, Carl Zaggy, world, world class. class. <sighs> Steve Mamid. Will. Yeah, nah. World class, but yeah. was Kel Brook could have been. Yeah, do you think world class is overrated? The word world class for me, world class is this very simple test, Porky. You win a belt and you defend it four or five times. Yeah, right. That's it. You defend it four or five times, and and in that sense, I'll put Joshua in the world class category. Not because he's an amazing boxer, but. Look, he, he turned one belt into three or four, right? That's what he did. Hmm. So fair play to him. Joshua, but we all... got Joshua in there, though, aren't we? Yeah, I think you've got to put Joshua there. Because, and I don't mind guys taking defeats. Like, the, losing at world level is cool, but as long as you're able to, to hang with people for, for a sustained period of time. Is he Gale, is he? It's like a Kell Brook sort of thing, isn't it? I think it's like a Kell Brook because you're almost looking at him going, which one of your rivals did you fight when they were in their prime? It was George and you lost. Well, you could say Boutte and Durrell, but Frotch fought them first, didn't he, and took the rose. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, Durrell's washed up. It was Groves. And then you had a draw with Badu Jack. So for me, not quite world class. What about Groves? No. No? No. Pretty brutal tonight. Uh, oh, well, all right then. Uh, Lennox Lewis, yes? Yes, but didn't come up in the British system. So we're giving, we're giving it Lennox Lewis, Carl Zaggy, Froch and Naz. Yeah. And you're not going to give Hatton that, no? Nope. Not Ben, not Eubank. None of those guys for me are that world level. Nigel, Ben? Well, first. Actually, Joe, you know, take that back. Maybe Nigel Ben because he he had the the Barkley win, he had the McClellan win. You got to put him in there. Doug Dewitt, he knocked knocked him out, didn't he? Yeah. In on in Atlantic City. But you you notice how we're struggling, Russ, to find yeah. these names. Yeah. Like like, and it's not people like Crawler. It's not people like Liam Smith. And it's not these people that people you and get pushed like on your head. No. 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 David no. A. No. Not David A. No. No. God, Terry, that's brutal, isn't it? Got six wins over world champions. Nah, but where, where, where's Hayes' reign of terror? There ain't none, is there? No. Uh, and you think about the reputation David has, and I love David to bits, but David Hayes should have been a guy that did 20 defences, maybe 10 at cruiserweight, 10 at heavyweight. That's what his career should have been. A bit like Michael Mora, 10 at light heavyweight, and then he didn't do the 10 at heavyweight, did he? Yeah. And so, so, so actually, when you start to break down these people who are meant to be world-class, they're not, man. They're just British boxing fiction. That's why I describe them. With a promoter who's got a big mouth. Yeah, who will tell you so-and-so's world-class and 
are they help? All right, then moving on. Uh, so we've done that one there. If we've got one for the uh, pundits, Clinton Woods, Robin Reed, and Joe Calzaghe. They don't seem to uh, do anything with Sky, do they? Clinton did, but obviously you put, you know that he got he was there to give his expert analysis as an area champion. There were no English then. It was British Commonwealth European world champion, been in with everybody. Clinton were on there one night and he gave an opinion and it wasn't liked. And he said, well, I'm here to give me an expert opinion. I know he never, he never went on again, but I don't think he were bothered. You know, you can imagine Clinton there, like I said to Rico earlier. He'd just tell it straight, wouldn't he? He, he, he'll, he can give it or take it. He's not bothered. But do you feel that the people that are now pundits are out there because the popular on social media and their followers are going to follow them onto the Sky platform and Sky get more views, whereas you Robin Reed, Cal Zaggies and Clinton Woods, who've achieved a lot, that they, they don't get Robert Green with pundit work. Do you think that's how it's work? It's a bit clicky? Okay, so Dave Caldwell goes live on Instagram and his view, his in his real time viewers probably peak at around eighty. Eighty people. Yeah. Oh, wow. Eddie Hearn Eddie Hearn peaks at about two thousand two hundred. Joshua will probably peak at about six thousand. Oh, so how come the, the uh, Dave Caldwell's a pundit then if he's not that popular? Because he's well, I think he's a good pundit to be honest. I I, I, uh, I do no, think no. Yeah, Dave bad, knows his boxes. Bad, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so, yeah, Dave's Dave's Eddie's mate. Yeah, is, is that how it's goes? Do you think we have to? It has to be able to feel comfortable around. They're, they're all Eddie's mates, or they're all part of that the original Matchroom crew. Well, I can Ryan like, Rhodes don't get a look in because I think he he's a good pundit and Jamie Moore. Yeah, but what, what link have they got to Eddie? What what what, what have they done for Eddie? What's Eddie Ryan's done? Ryan's mates with Johnny Nelson. Yeah, but no, you're missing the point here, Porky. Right? When Hearn came to to Sky with Matchroom, he already had his crew. Darren Barker, Bell Youth, uh, Caldwell was floating around. Uh, Froch. These are all guys that Eddie's all kind of always looked after until Froch went off script. Yeah. Johnny's just always been there because they need a black guy that's not going to fucking boot the chessboard up in the air. So he, his position is kind of secure until they find another guy who can do what Johnny does. Then Johnny might be in trouble. And so... You know, that's why you got Anna Woolhouse there. So you can say, look how diverse our punditry crew is. If Eddie had his way, it would just be all of his mates on Sky. That's what it would be. And then he'd know that they'd do what he wanted them to do, like BT Sport do, where it's just a really cozy fraternity of guys. Richie Woodall. Yeah, Woodall, Bunce. You know, these sorts of people who just aren't that interesting. And and they're just as biased as Sky are. And they, they really... No one... No one tells the truth. Steve Bunce is definitely not a guy to, to call it like he sees it. Oh, I don't know. I like Bunce. Yeah, but, but you don't let that blind you to what he actually does. Like Steve Bunce is the, the boxing establishment's pit bull. Whenever they need someone attacking, they let Bunce go after them. All right, then. Uh, moving on. Uh, Steffi Bull's tweets to uh, Eddie Earn. They're looking a bit desperate now. Uh, do you feel it's because they've knocked the Jonas Harper fight back and they're going in a different direction and he doesn't have the day-to-day -day contact with Eddie like he has with other people? Do you feel that's why he's putting these desperate tweets out, rimming Eddie Hearn and Sky? No, I like Steffi. Uh, Steffi's all right. He's, Steffi Bull is doing what a manager should do. Like You, you think about Steffi. Steffi's saying to himself, I manage 20 boxers, right? My job is to make sure they all eat through the course of a year. So we focus in on individual events like Jonas Harper not happening. Whereas Steffi's always thinking about, I've got to make a decision that means that everyone can eat. So I can't burn any bridges. So I can see why he might want to do a bit of, you know, backside kissing or keep Eddie sweet. But Eddie also needs Steffi Bull because you can't put on shows in Yorkshire without Steffi Bull, as things stand. Just that cold, hard reality. Yeah. All right, then. But you, probably, but you probably don't need Steffi until you've got crowds back because Steffi's only going to give you ticket sellers. He's not going to give you ready-made stars. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, then, moving on. Uh, does Harper Jonas happen? Or yes. Does it happen yes. Down the line. 
it will happen on a pay-per-view card because it's a cheap fight to put on, but it's an easy fight to sell. All right. Uh, Savannah Marshall, Lewis Ritson, Callum Smith, Billy Joe, John Ryder, uh, Yui Fury. Uh, do you feel that Eddie's bothered about them? Uh, okay. So here's, here, here's my, my assessment, right? Ritson had his chance and he blew it. So her now knows Ritson's not at the level he needs. Eddie only needs people he can put in line for world titles and can headline pay-per-views. And Ritson's not that guy. Savannah Marshall. I had a softball for Savannah Marshall, but I remember once asking if she fancied jumping on my podcast. Never got a response back. And then I thought, well, perhaps this is a, the root cause of the problem. Might have thought Savannah, line, Terry. <laughs> say again? When you said Savannah, do you fancy jumping on my podcast? You might have thought it were a line. <laughs> you right. might have thought you were chatting her up. Ah, uh, well, you never know. I might do. But no, so I was disappointed in that because what it showed me is maybe this is someone who's comfortable to where they are at the moment and they've accepted their fate. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. Go and do you. I'll do me. Um, so, and maybe that's what Eddie's seen in it. Like, he, he hasn't seen that hunger. And I know people criticize Shannon Courtney, but one thing you've got to say about Shannon Courtney is she's always hungry. Like, she, she's proactive in developing her own career. And I think a lot of fighters need to learn from Shannon Courtney in terms of wanting to elevate themselves. Yeah. But, you know, Callum Smith... <sighs> What are you going to do with Callum Smith, apart from Billy Joe, maybe Golovkin, and that's pretty much it. John Ryder rematch? Uh, I don't think Gallagher will take it. He knows that was close. He'd screaming blue murder if it had gone the other way. Yeah. But How did Crawler get a rematch with Linares? Uh, money. He won two rounds, didn't he? Out of the first, first fight, and two in second. You could give him three in first, if that. He won d- five rounds in two fights, did he? I tell you what, Linares was smart. He just came to the UK, pocketed a few million, and just destroyed reputations, and that was it. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, we know Joe Gallagher's done well for all the Smith brothers and a lot of other people, but he's also done well for Joe Gallagher. But he protects his fighters. And I mean, I heard stuff back after the when Jonas, how, how he handled the fight we, we were at. And I think he's an experienced old stalwart now. And I think that, is it time to upgrade him from Tesco Joe to Sainsbury's Joe? No, nah, no, nah, Waitrose. Waitrose. Joe Gallagher. Than Sainsbury's Waitrose. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, Waitrose by far. We can't call him Marks and Spencers because that's too, too, not catchy enough, is it? Yeah, now nah, Waitrose Joe. Waitrose Joe, is that what we're going to decide on? <laughs> Mate, on. look. Go on. Let me, just, so I'm a... go on sorry. Let me just send this text to, to my tech guy. Otherwise, I'll forget. Cam, can you change that from Sainsbury's Joe to Waitrose Joe? Two puppy dogs hanging out at Waitrose bags, if you don't mind. And, te- and Joe, I'm going to say Tesco Joe, and Joe Gallagher's face in middle. Wait, <laughs> Joe, that's his new name. All right, cheers. Right, that's, I've got short term memory loss, Anna. Doctors, give me these, Terry. Uh, put me on them. Oh, okay. Because apparently, when I'm sick, because of my gastric band, it takes all nutrients out of my body. And obviously, it's no secret. Everybody knows I left my kids, don't they, in McDonald's. Everybody in the area knows, but only for a couple of minutes. I drove off. You know, when they were in the play area, I was sat drinking my coffee and I thought, and they didn't come out for about 45 minutes and I'd been messing on my phone and that. I went and got in the car, reversed off and that. I thought, I'm sure I forgot something. When I got back in, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell your mum. First thing they did. But <sighs> I know, yeah, so. But other than that, I'm on these now. I used to. So I'm going to have to start taking them on. I keep putting it off. But, uh, so that's why I've had to ring in then because I'll forget. Now, moving on. Uh, so we've done the Savannah one. We've done the Waitrose, Waitrose Joe. I mean, Tesco Joe. He's been Tesco Joe 10 years, hasn't he? Waitrose, Waitrose Joe is going to take some going, but we'll get it going. 
So it's Waitrose <laughs> Row, all you hardcores. Wait, Waitrose Row. Waitrose Joe. Is that a London company, Waitrose? I think they started out in West London, but it's, it's, it's anywhere where you find Range Rovers in the driveway, Porky. Oh, no, it's Ford Cortinas and Austin Allegro's up here, mate. Apart from uh, Steffi's out. Parker, yeah, unless you, well, Steffi Bull's got Porsches and all sorts on his drive, mate, where, where he lives, so he's all yeah, right. he, He's doing bits, that's why. He's doing bits, doing... <laughs> he was. Right, uh, moving on. Where's Dave Allen heading now? Is he a sparring partner or is, is he a fighter? What's happening? And will, it, will he last the four week out in the, in the Russian-Ukraine wilderness? Were you second Povetkin? Or will he be sent home like he were when he went to Spa Vladimir? got sent home, didn't he? Will he stay? I don't know. So I always go back to when I used to speak to Isaac Chamberlain about training with, with Usyk in Ukraine. And for him, it was educational. He learned a lot about how an elite level boxer prepares. And, like, and I see it a lot in how Isaac prepares now. So maybe actually it's what Dave needs to be around that sort of elite level heavyweight and he can see how, how they're trying to extract the most out of their ability. I think Dave can hang in there. He's, you know, he's, he's kind of fight ready, so he should be in reasonable shape to hang with those guys. And he's got that style that, that I'm not going to say perfectly mirrors Chisora, but he's got a lot of the same shots that Derek's got, maybe without the same speed. Say, he ain't got the same head movement as Derek, though, has he? But we might do after you. Usyk peppers him a few times. <laughs> well, let's hope it, it's the making of him when he comes back and fights Cash Alley. Because they're, they're both at that level, aren't they? In fact, Cash I, think is a good fight. Fight. I think it's a good fight. Cash has won a central area. Dave hasn't won a central area. So you've got to put Cash above him, haven't you? As regards achievements. No, 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 no. Dave, Dave's fought on bigger stages, and that counts yeah. for something. All right, then. So it's an even fight, then. You make that. Um, no, so, look. I'll be honest with you. I like Cash. Like I know Richard posted up a video today of Cash, you know, hitting the bag and stuff. And I like Cash. He's a he smooth, knows. hand speed, strong. Those guys should just fight. I don't think it's not even about who's better, who's worse. It's just. You can't have two guys from South Yorkshire without, you know, establishing who has bragging rights. So let's just get it on. Yeah. 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 So we wish the White Rhino well, but should he have took the Dubois fight, Bacoli fight, Tom Little fight? You wish Tom Little, yes. He, Tom Little, yes. Hugh Fury, no. Hugh Fury should be fighting Martin Bacoli. That's the start and end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's... Revenge. He could get, get that revenge for, for cutting his forehead. What about Yui against Yoka? It's a good fight, isn't it? Nah, I just... Yoka's just better than him. Yeah. Better. Yeah, better. I don't know. Well, we, Yoka's not been 12 rounds yet, has he? He won't go 12 rounds. Well, we'll see, won't we? We'll see. Uh, so, are you saying that Yoka beats Parker? Right now. Right now, yeah. So you rate Yoka that good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. He he will he will he will obliterate Joseph Parker. He'll stop him. Does Joshua vacate the Warren Boxing Organization belt? WBO belt. Uh, Sorry about that. Be a waste. It's, not, it's only banter. Yeah, as I say, it'd be a waste of signing Usyk if you're just going to get rid of that belt, right? Yeah, go on, yeah. Because Usyk would have to fight Dubois, I imagine, if it went vacant. So then you're like, eh. All right, then. So you don't know. You don't know if that belt's going to be vacated. Because weren't all roads supposed to lead to Undisputed? Ah, well, they, they, they stopped their hashtag, didn't they? Road to Undisputed. <laughs> uh, as Richard Poxon disappeared off the boxing scene... So, remember he, he was making a load of noise about being the gatekeeper to ITV boxing, right? Yeah. And we all wondered what Poxon was doing there. And no one's ever told us how much they had budgeted for boxing. No one's ever told us what was spent. We don't even know what the plans were. It yeah. just seems that ITV just thought boxing's a waste of our time. Well, he was we saying they were going to put a bid in for Kel Brook Crawford. It's not happened, does it? So, 
he's not well in as I, are we ITVs is making out, is he? Uh, he says Kel Brook's a big mate, so why ain't he put a bid in for it on ITV? Get Kel Brook on ITV. If they can get Eubank against that, who is it, Quinlan, why can't they get Kelbrook Crawford on ITV? So Poxton's not a big player then, is he? Yeah, well, there you go. I, to be honest, I think it's a mess that ITV just, they, they've got their, their fingers burned, didn't they? They said, right, we're going to do this boxing. They realised Eubank Jr. and his team danced to their own tune and that Eubank Jr., he also realised he could make more money elsewhere. And... I just don't see it happening. Or maybe ITV have said, we've got to have enough money in the, in the bank to pay for whoever Eubank Jr. fights in December. And so they can only do one of the cards this year. And it's definitely not going to be Kel and Terence Crawford because that's not, they're not invested in either one of those guys. Yeah, but Kel Brook against Terence Crawford is a better fight than Eubank against some American, isn't it? Okay, so then what ends up happening? Okay, let's say Kel Brook wins. And Kel Brook ends up back on Sky. Now, ITV have just basically made Kel Brook a star for Sky. And if they won't see any of the, the future upside. Why waste your time? Get him to sign a contract then. But isn't Kel still with Matt? Is it, Terry? Yeah. Isn't Kel still with Matchroom? Yeah, but he'll not have a contract with Matchroom. I don't think any of them have a contract. Brotch didn't have one. He had an handshake. <laughs> Kel, you had an handshake. Dave Allen's got an handshake. Yes, I, do, I, don't, I don't see Kelp stepping away from Sky. I don't see ITV investing in a fighter they have no interest in. So I think their money will be spent on U, the Eubank Junior card in December. All right, then. Well, Bob Arum is screaming about it, having to go at ITV and Sky and BT and all sorts. All right, then, moving on. Uh, Mark Tibbs, Billy Joe Saunders, Ben Davidson, the soap opera continues. What's, what next for Billy Joe? And has Ben Davison been found out by world champion boxers now to have left him? Uh, Did Billy Joe go back to Mark Tibbs because he feels safe there and they know the onions? So look at what Billy Joe needs at the moment. Billy Joe doesn't need anyone to teach him how to box. He can box. Billy just needs someone that's going to keep him on the straight and narrow in the run-up to a fight and make sure that Billy's right physically and Billy's right mentally so he can box. Doesn't need anything else. Whereas Ben needs fighters he can educate and turn into examples of what he does. So Ben Davison would be better off, actually, working with some younger guys. He'd be better off in that sort of space, guys who are making their debut or something like that, because otherwise he'll never get the credit. You won't get the credit for Taylor because you took over him when he was a world champion. Yeah. You won't get the credit for Billy Joe. You won't get the credit for Tyson Fury because they were already elite before you took over. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. But uh, they've been training well, Mark, uh, Mark and Billy, so that's good. Uh, moving on then. Manny Pacquiao against Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul. What's going on, Terry? I had to keep my emotions in check then when I said that. <sighs> Manny Pacquiao and Floyd, they just can't leave that cash alone, can they, from fans? Yeah, but they've earned the right to do that. Well, in these sort of fights? Yeah. Well, we get to 41 and you can just take what you want. Okay, so Mayweather gave you 50 and 0, right? Yeah. Pacquiao gave you like two, two, two solid decades of memorable moments. What more do you want from him, Porky? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. You know, if Clinton Woods came out now and said, I want to do a three-rounder with Calzaghi, you wouldn't complain. I want it to be an exhibition and not down as a boxing match, though. And I wouldn't want Sky to be hanging out at back of them and ripping fans off with pay-per-view. And Johnny Nelson coming out yesterday saying, well, I'd have to do my job, wouldn't I, and promote it and all that, if it were, if it were on Sky and all that. What, like Johnny Nelson, who said Conor McGregor beats Mayweather it, 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 down to fitness, that it drowns him late on. I mean, oh, you know, going against everybody else saying Mayweather wins. 
I'd love, nah, it's, yo, it's an occasion I'd like to see. I don't, I'm not really bothered about the technical aspects of it, but why not? If that's how Manny's going to go out, fair enough. If that's how Floyd's going to go out again, so be it. Yeah. Come here, Skill Rocky, you're biting me. Right. Uh, <laughs> pick me on hand. Uh, has Johnny Nelson lost the plot of late? With, you know, the lucky punch and then retracting it, groveling, and, and basically he's doing mo- loads of interviews on a daily basis with everybody. Does, is he addicted to fame and wanting to be out there? Or is he just trying to cover up all the stick he's getting from being a company man and an arse licker? What do you think? I think Johnny Nelson plays his role brilliantly. Yeah. He, yeah, he, we always Johnny, bet against what he picks, and we've done well out of it, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, but you see, you see, you see how much emotion he stirs up in you. Yeah, in me, he does. Yeah, he's done his job. That's his job. His job is to be that guy that the fans go, "Are you serious, Johnny?" And yeah, and once he once he does that, that's his work complete. Yeah, he does, mate. He, he gets on my wick. But, uh, right, let's move on there. Tyson, T- Traveller Lives Matter. Uh, I've been doing that filming in Morecambe and saying, Coogan, did you get that? Did you get that? Is Coogan now the in house media for Tyson and various other people, Eddie Earn and that? And has he crossed the line where uh, being matey with people and now they're saying, put this on your channel? And is he sort of in a precarious position? Uh,. I don't all lives well, matter, Terry. All lives matter. I mean, what next are we going to have? Ginger people's lives matter? Or no, no, wait, wait, wait. No, no wait, let's hold on. I thought it was, I don't know the full facts, but if you look at it at face value, you know, not allowing travellers into the pub and not giving a reason, I'm a bit like, okay, that's out of order. Now, if someone says they trashed the pub two nights before, then it's a different discussion. I don't know what happened. You right get banned but... if you do something. You don't let that person in, but you can't stop others coming in a pub, can you? Yeah, and I think so. That's why I understand. You know, if they if the travellers feel persecuted and they want to make a stand, I'm not going to stand in the way of them doing that. Fair play to them. I agree on that. Um, and in terms of all lives matter, yes, but some people's lives apparently matter more than others. So we we need to get to a point where we respect all lives before we can say all lives matter. Because right now, not all lives matter. No. What do you mean not all, all lives matter? What do you mean? All lives well, matter. If, if you look at this world, Porky, right? Yeah. Some groups get it better than others. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. So, so when we say all lives matter, we have to mean that. That means that we have to treat everyone as if their life matters in all ways that we, we can't turn people down for jobs because they're a woman. We can't turn people down for social security because we don't like how they look. You know, we can't, we can't not offer someone a, a, an apartment to live in because we don't like the color of their skin. We just have to say, look, you're a human being. I'm a human being. Let's just get it cracking. And I don't think we're there yet, Russ. Yeah, I don't, mate. All right, then. But do you feel that the way it's going, this Travellers' Lives Matter, Joshua Black Lives Matter, do you think it could be sold as like a Holmes Cooney fight, you know, based on race? I, I really hope it's not. But I have a very, very bad feeling we're going to get to that point. And, and through no fault of Fury and through no fault of Joshua, because I don't think either one of those guys even... Race isn't a factor to either one of those guys, just from what I know. But it's easy to, if you're one of those guys who wants to be a racist, it's easy to latch onto Fury and go, I hope he knocks Joshua out. That will teach him about Black Lives Matter. And if you're on the other side of that fence, it's easy to latch onto Joshua. Yeah, but but I'm that, hoping, yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. But you're I'm hoping that the more mature minds prevail and we just go, this is about one man getting all the belts. That's all that matters in this fight. Yeah, but do you know what? Whenever you pit a black man against a white man and it's a massive, massive, you know, once in a 25-year fight, do you feel that people tend to side with either side anyway? It happened with Mayweather Hatton. Yeah. It was horrible. 
Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, flash black beep. And they're like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't like all that flash running around the ring and all that. Look at Ricky. Look at Ricky defending the punches with his face, mate. Ricky's proper, son. He's proper. You know what I mean? If he went from Manchester, he'd be from Canning Tanny with old Ricky. Look at that. Eating them punches with his face, mate. That's the British way. Go on, son. Get stuck in. Not all that. That shoulder rolling and flashing. Oh, what's all that about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Canelo against Dazone. He's suing him in it for 280 odd million. How do you see that panning out? And do you agree that, do you, do you uh, think I should get more kudos for my May 2018 video when I said it won't last two years that I zone uh, Dare to Be Great? It lasted 22 months, didn't it? So do you think I should get a bit more kudos? I'm just enjoying Rocky at the moment. Sorry, Porky. I'm just. <laughs> I'm arse in my face, innit? Come here. I know, man. Come here. There you go. Oh, yeah. he, I, I like it when, he, when, he, when he just put the paws on you, just to let you know. He's like, nah, you're going to get pinned down here, Porky. <laughs> All right, there, Rockstar. <laughs> but uh, what do you think? Oh, look at it. He's going to clean his face. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> uh, what do you think, then, about what I've just said to you, Terry? Uh, Canelo does this not... Was... This was always going to happen. They overpaid for Canelo, right? They massively overpaid for Canelo. And they got that buyer's remorse when they suddenly realized we can't tell Canelo what to do. Yeah. So we paid all of that money and got zero control. And so Canelo's then gone, well, hold on a second. I have a guarantee for 36 or 35 million quid for every fight. I never promised I'd fight Golovkin. In fact, I have no intention of fighting Golovkin. You've got seven fights, you got... Danny, on deal. Eight, no. eight, eight, isn't it? No. Eight, eight or nine, yeah. He's got eight, a lot less than that. Eight, millions, he's got, isn't it? Eight. But, but the problem Canelo's got is he doesn't have a contract with DAZN. He has a contract with Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy, who have a contract with DAZN. So what's happened here, from what I can gather, Porky, is Oscar's lied to DeZone about what he can deliver and he's lied to Canelo about what he can have. Mm. And so, so Oscar's done what every promoter does, tries to just stay in the middle and kind of muddy the waters and hide the information from both parties. The best solution to all of this is for Canelo to sign a contract with DeZone and for DeZone to say, we've got a fighter signed to us. Oscar, can you promote him? And if Oscar says, I don't want to do that deal, just get rid of Oscar and just have Canelo Alvarez promotions. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting times ahead, isn't it? All right, then, moving on. John Harding Jr. against Linus Adolfia. It's a good fight. Yeah, I think that. You like Linus, don't you? Uh, Linus is a good guy. Linus is a guy I'd like to see cross over. Uh, you know, I think the winner of this against Denzel Bentley would be a good fight. Uh, just This is kind of what you want in British boxing. I think it's where we've gone wrong for years because you'd always have a generation of boxers and promoters were selfish and arrogant and would just push them all down different routes and they'd never fight each other early in their careers. And so when it came down to having tough fights in your 21st, 26th fight, you were never ready for it. So if Linus can have a few fights like this where you're fighting, you know, John Hardy Jr. now, maybe a Danny Dignam afterwards, you know, that's how you build your confidence. That's how you build your career. Yeah. You know, instead of fighting all these journeymen, then out of nowhere, you're fighting an elite level guy. It's like, well, where's this come from? Like Tony Yoker, he's come from gold medal Olympians. And I think one thing we can learn from in boxing from this is Tony Yoker doesn't need to knock 20 guys out to get a title shot. He's knocked eight out now, and he is really a top 10 world guy now, isn't he? Yeah, he's ranked. And, and that is quite rightly, too, because you're an elite-level athlete. Yeah. Like, you've been an elite-level athlete for the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and I, I think that there's a lot to be said for this pandemic now, that fighters, they don't need to be milking it, and fight promoters don't. Just get them in, and if they lose, bring them back. We need that mindset that they don't need to protect their own all the time. Do you see where I'm coming from? 
Yeah, I, I, I talk to guys about this all the time. There's a good time to take your first loss. And it's normally around fight number 10, give or take two fights. Yeah. You just want to take your loss then. Mm. Because it stops you getting too arrogant. You just remember all of a sudden, like, oh, I've got a lot of work to do. And it makes you hungry again. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then, moving on. Uh, will Liam Cameron return? He's been banned now for two and a half years. And was his ban excessive at four years? So, so there was an interesting development during the summer where UK had said, we're going to look at how we treat recreational drugs. So if you fail a test for a recreational drug, we're going to look at whether we're punishing you severely or not. And I think they're saying something like, I don't know if they're going to rescind all the bans from January 2021 or whether they're going to just review them and maybe change them. But from January 2021, the expectation should be that UK will have a different approach to recreational drug failures. And that might mean that Liam can fight next year. So I've, what I said to Liam was, Get guidance on you, Ken, about what's going to happen in January 2021 and then just start getting your, your submissions ready now. He'll be staying getting fit. That's what Liam Nah, he's, got, he's going to fight it. He said he's going to fight a cruiser. Cruiser? Yeah, he said he's knocking out heavyweights and sparring now, so he's all right. Stop trolling, Terry. We, we, this channel's a, a channel where we like to tell it straight. Liam's not going to fight cruisers when he's been a middleweight. Come on. Come on, man. Like, look. Tony did it. And, and to us, Liam's like the British James Tony, if we think about it. Moving on then, Terry. <laughs> Your photograph up there. You've not hammered frotch today, on here, and I'm missing it. Nah, then the picture's enough, man. It tells a story. Yeah, but frotch got up and knocked him out, didn't he? So you, I, nah, I nah, 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 nah. Look, look, look at those legs. It actually looks like frotch is doing backstrokes. You love it, don't you? Listen... You'll know when he gets you, and he, and he gets you in an headlock. No, right. you get a belly-to-back suplex. Come on, man. I've been watching wrestling long enough. Right. Bean, should he resign after Dave Allen came out and said that Adam Smith shouldn't commentate because he's head of Sky Boxing, and they've got a deal with uh, Eddie Earn, an exclusive, and he's commentating on the fights and doing – press conferences and it's a conflict of interest should Bean resign from the commentators just go back to being in the in the background at Sky Sports like Ed Robinson because all we see now is Bean out there every day doing interviews and uh, it, he's, he's starting to get under my skin he needs to go back to Beanville Island to the Bean Masons and just Bean off <laughs> he's doing my head Bean I'll wring your fucking neck, Bean. No, why is it a conflict of interest? Me. It's annoying me. No, but wait, why is it a conflict of interest? Well, Eddie Hearn's got an exclusive deal with Sky to promote matchroom fighters. He's yeah. a commentator on these fights for Sky, and he's head of boxing, so he's a conflict of interest. When an opponent throws a punch at the Sky fighters, they just say, oh, what a great chin the Sky fighters got. They don't give credit to the opponent. And I think that people have had enough of it. And fair enough, Johnny Nelson's come out and said, well, maybe we I might be a bit biased and we got it wrong that day. But this has been going on for far too long. Macklin's not come out and apologised yet because he's probably stubborn. But he knows when he started there, he were brilliant. And then he, then he, then he managed to join the cult. Bean pricked his finger. said, look, you're in the cult. If you go against us, may you burn in hell. It's like joining the mafia. You know, it's simpler than that, Russ. I think what happens is it's like any organization. Once you become involved in it and it looks after you and it treats you well, yeah, you, you start to fall in love with it. Yeah. yeah, you fall in love with it. And so you'll always see it through rose tinted specs. I think it's just hard it's hard to be a consistent commentator on Sky. Now, if you're saying that they should rotate it, I'm on board with that. So if you if you start to say, let's do it on a ballot system. So maybe one week you get like a Glenn McCrory and Glenn will give you the the cold, hard facts, whether it's a bad fight or not. And then maybe the week afterwards, you get someone else like a George Groves and he might be a bit more down the middle. And then you might get an Adam Smith who's a bit more company line. Let's get the diversity of, 
approaches and then let's see what works. Well, I was a bit disappointed that you and Starsky and Hutch didn't uh, broach this uh, hot topic. You know, I've been oh. pushing the boat. You did, you did do a lot of other stuff, though. It was two hours, 44 minutes, but you never covered this. So I want to cover it while, you, while I've got you on here. <laughs> Who do you think? Who do you think at the moment in punditry is good and worth the money? Who do you think? Who? There's a kid called Richie Gray. He's re retired at 26 as a pro. Young guy. Where's he from? Where's he from? He's from Essex. Is he any good? Yeah. R Richie, I like Richie because Richie will give you that pro perspective. But he'll also say, listen, don't get conned by what these people are telling you. Huh? It's a lot easier to be in there than they're telling you. Like, Richie will just tell it honestly. Well, what Starsky have to say about it? Because isn't he a commentator for uh, Steve Goodwin? No, Steve doesn't have commentators. What's Mark? I've seen Martin with a microphone in his hand last year at a show. Wasn't that for Boxing Social? Oh, were it? Oh, right. I've seen, I seen him. Yeah, I've seen him at a couple of shows. With, it's that with Alt Media with his microphone. Isn't he a trainer as well or something as well? I uh, know he passed the test that you didn't. Doing, I, I never even got a chance to go for a test once it's in my uh, form. <laughs> <laughs> they stitched me up, didn't they? Put me on an interview with Chief of Police. British yeah. board. <laughs> Stuff you at British Boxing World. We're going to bring you down. Nah, they're good people. We're going to get World Boxing. We need something called World Boxing uh, Board or something that governs the sport correctly. And not people that loads of years ago just set something up so they could take a nip out every fight that happened in the country. I don't agree with it. It's been going on far too long. It needs stopping. <laughs> They've got the notes in the trough, haven't they? Ah, it's, a, it's a cosy club. It's a cosy club. And that's why people don't rock the boat. Yeah, like me. Right. Right. But uh, <laughs> hey, what about Jeff Hines? He's taking him to Icourt, isn't he? You know Jeff Hines, the referee? Yeah, why? I don't know. It's, uh, it's all gone through. It's all online if you go look. Jeff Hines versus Boxing Board of Control, High Court. How's about that one? Ooh. Interesting, isn't it? Well, the thing is with Boxing Board of Control, they've got people on there, on their board, who like John Reese QC and stuff like that. They've got a few QCs on there, aren't they? So they're but you need them for your disciplinary stuff. So they'll do yeah, the disciplinary I work. That, yeah, but it's, it shouldn't be like you're going in front of Edmaster, should it, when you go in front of these people? You know what I mean? I mean, these people, you want to see how they behave at after parties, mate with all the free gratis, but yet you can have you in front of them on a Sunday afternoon and, or a Saturday afternoon in an hotel and be asking you questions. And, and it's like being interviewed by old Bill because half of them are old Bill or prosecutors. It's been going on far too long and it, need, it needs nipping in bud. And if any of them, what... them they can call my channel. So I'll do it. <laughs> Oh, no. what I've got on my file here. I've got a few more. I've got a few more cards up my sleeve to play, mate. And let me tell you, and there's a few of them now. And I'm not going to play them just yet. They're all up there. I've got a few aces in the pack and a few jacks. But uh, it is what it is, mate. And it all we want is a sport that's fair. We don't want B samples going missing. I mean, this is how I look at it. And you may think I'm being harsh here, digging Flex Wheeler out here. But Dominic Ingle, as you know, three of his fighters have failed dope tests. If that were Tottenham Hotspur footballers, Jose Mourinho would be out of a job. So why okay, is that okay, wait, 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 no, whoa, whoa, whoa. So now let's look at football. How can it be that in twenty-something years, nearly thirty years of the Premier League, only one player's ever failed for a performance-enhancing substance, and that was Abel well, Xavier? Not punching you in head, though, are they? No, nah, but I imagine the problems are bigger in football than they are in boxing. They are in sprinting. They're all on it, aren't they, apparently? But they're not punching you in the head. This is people getting punched in the head. Your head's not designed to be punched like they're getting punched, right, some of these fighters. Then why don't we just ban boxing? Oh, no, you might all just let them all take it and sign some up. 
Something needs to be done because there's cheats out there. It's all very well, Tony Bell, you were saying, stone them in middle at village like they used to do it 15th century in the stock. Yeah, I agree with that, Tony. But what happens when it's a matchroom fighter and you go silent, you go all... Do you know what I mean? Tony doesn't say anything then, does he? Dylan White's innocent and all that. Where's Dylan White's fucking bee sample? Well, where is it? It was tested. Well, people genuinely believe that this bee sample wasn't tested. Explain why. Listen, mate, he pissed in a cup. They poured it into two, two tubes, an A and a B. The A failed and the B, where's the B? That didn't fail. Well, what show is it? Show us proof. I want to see proof. The B sample failed. That's why they had to provide an excuse. Well, what about the A sample? That failed as well. So, well, well, where are, where's all this? Why is it all gone away? Why do these things just disappear? And Liam Cameron, four-year ban, his didn't disappear. There were nobody wheeled out to speak up for him, mother, because he's not a pay-per-view kid, is he? He's not bringing millions into the sport. It's got to be done fair. Gerald Miller, fair enough, get gone. Get out of the sport, you're a cheat. But he's not the only one, is he? We've just been waxing lyrical about Yoker's power. He refused to test it and took a ban. Uh, I don't know if he refused. I think he just failed the whereabouts, right? Like they couldn't find him. But I might be wrong with that. Well, it, it, it's not good, and we want we want some clarity on it, and we want fairness in the sport. This is how I look at it. We've just men mentioned Dominic Ingle, aren't we? The white flex wheeler. The gym lab, the Ingle lab is that way. Right, this is how I look at it. Any of his wins from his fighters against people from other gyms, is there an asterisk at the side of that win? I say yes. <laughs> Well, what, what makes you so sure that they're clean themselves? Well, we don't know, do we? But they're trained by a man who's had three cheats, busted. So, I, I mean, how many more chances does he want? He's got more lives than a cat. He's got a problem. <laughs> Come see me, Dominic. You've got the heart of a breadcrumb. Well, this is how I look at it. I'm very passionate about boxing and I'm hoping to make changes or hoping that there's going to be change. We've got a channel here. I can be outspoken. And let's get some out of it. But people have got to get behind me. People who've got board, reg board licenses, right? The only ones that are telling me bits and bobs are them that ain't got a license no more. The ones with licenses, I respect you, but it's no good having a chat to me and saying, well, I can't send out because I've still got a board license. Dump your license and go get an Irish one. Peter Fury's got an Irish one. They won't give Peter a license. Like they won't give me one. They won't give Peter a visa to America. They won't give me one. If he's gone and got an Irish license to train fighters, go get an Irish license and then you can say what you want. But nobody's going to say anything, are they? They all want to hide. It's, well, you know, it's a bit, ooh, Porky, you're a bit out there. You've got no filter. You like tie and boob and all that. Well, of course I've got no filter because people are getting their heads punched in. There's another thing I'm unhappy about while I'm on a roll. Kids getting fights at short, at short notice against superstars. Uh, that's not fair, but that, then again, that could be their own fault for not ticking over, couldn't it? You always tell your fighters to tick over, don't you? It's your job. You, your job is to be in shape. Yeah. yeah. When you call yourself a professional boxer, my expectation is that you're in better shape than the average athlete. My expectation is that you're ready to fight. Yeah. Yeah. The time you should be having fight camps is when you're older and you kind of know your game, and you know what it takes to be ready for a fight. Then you can have some time off, and then you go, right, I've got eight weeks to get ready. I get that. But if you're fighting six and eight rounders, and you're talking about fight camps, you're doing it all wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Do you feel that's why there weren't a lot of fighters ready to fight in Eddie Hearn's fight camp and go into the bubble? No. Nah. <laughs> what did you think to bubble, Terry? Did you hear some of the things that I heard? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I don't know how many needles or how many pins went through that bubble, but by, by the end of the bubble, mate, it was completely flat. Like, my orgy, it, cocaine orgies. That's right. Just piss take. That was utter piss take. Me, mate. 
And we missed yeah. it all. We missed it all because we're not Mushroom FC. Well, we will remember. be one day. Camcorders, orgies, cocaine, champagne, the lot. You don't mess around in Essex. The only way is Eddie. And so, and, and, but this is, this is how you get what you want, right? You, yeah. you keep people well fed, you keep them watered, you keep them happy, but you make sure that you've got a little bit of evidence that they dipped their toe in when they weren't supposed to. You go, okay, cool. You're one of us now. Yeah, you're one of the cult, one of the bean masons. <laughs> Pork masons. <laughs> Pork masons. <laughs> All right, then. Well, listen, it's been emotional yet again, Terry. Have we done 32 questions? Yeah, 32. All done. I've thrown them in the bin. Well, I've missed it, right? But yeah, <laughs> not a good shot as it used to be. But yeah, it's been good. Me and Rocky have enjoyed it, haven't we, Rockstar? We've, uh, we, there's a couple of good videos here. Uh, it's been good. Does this one to go out and recall? I think I'll probably put them out tonight or tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. Uh yeah, tomorrow. They don't, don't saturate people on a Sunday. But I was going to say, congratulations on that 12,000 video, man. I, I saw the numbers. Yeah, the, it's, look, it's picking up a bit now, isn't it? I'm hitting all targets that they've asked me to. I've done everything that they've asked me to do as regards so many videos and hit this, hit that, do this, do that. We need a meeting to, to talk about when we're having a fucking meeting like half the time. But I've done everything asked of me and I'm enjoying it. It's not, it's a bit different to what I've done in other things in my life. And, but I've adjusted to it and I'm happy. I'm happy. You remember when I started in my shed, Terry, and everybody was laughing at me? Mate, look, it's one of the reasons people hate you, Porks. I know, yeah. Because all you did is you got off your backside. Yeah. That was it. You, you, you got bored of ranting on Twitter. Got, you said, you know what? I'm just going to go and do this and I'm going to build something. And you built it. And... Look, if you go back to the first video, it wasn't very sophisticated. It was hard to listen to. But now look at you. Yeah, but now look at you. I mean, it's, it's evolved and it's elevated. 1,113 and, videos later. <laughs> yeah, well, that's how you grow, right? Yeah. But so all that negativity is down to people who they had exactly the same opportunity to do what you did. Yeah. And they, they just haven't got the heart. That's still the one. Hiding, they're they're still hiding behind the... The accounts, but you know, I, I enjoy the banter. But what's that? What's that guy called who always has plenty? To, they all have plenty to say on live chat, don't they? On asylum, I always catch up on it on a Mondays, but I always have a flick <laughs> through it and I have a bit of a laugh about it. But you guys can do what I've done too. You just need to stop hiding behind your cameras and just come out. Because I was like, you're at first, I was like, oh, I don't even want to put my face on Twitter. And eventually, you just got to say, look, if you want to be outspoken and play a part, you've just got to go for it. You've got to stop what you're doing. Make sure you've got a few quid saved because there's no money doing this. Stop what you're doing and have a go. And don't hide. And this is why I give people respect who who do it. I mean, there's obviously some people I don't respect on YouTube and they know who they are, the ones that are hiding. But it is what it is, isn't it? Hey, hey, what about that young kid that stuck it to you, Porky? I like that kid. Jamie, what's his surname? I don't know. Let me, I've got his name here. I'm going to get him. Oh. Shoes. Doing videos about me, mate. Hang on a minute. I've got him in here. Nah, what a great kid. <laughs> we put it on now. I want <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this if you want to have a bit of a laugh. Only hardcores will watch till, right till the very end. Right, hang on a minute. My mate Mark Siddle sent me it. Right, you ready? Listen to this.
there's a lot of debate online, etc., etc. But there's a couple of channels that you can clearly tell the spread propaganda. And these are two main boxing channels that spread this propaganda on Porky's Corner. Hey! Now, they... <laughs> these guys are always head. Right, he's, he's hammering me and he's hammering UK, U, UC TV boxing. Uh, and he's actually all right, UC TV. <laughs> the kid's channel is called... I'm not going to put the full video on because it's 12 minutes, but you've got to give him some balls. He's got 92 views, bless him. He's just starting out and he's called James Fernie. F-E-R-N-I-E. But there you go. I, I, Stop you know, showing his I, face. I, <laughs> yeah. Is he showing his face? No, he's not showing his face. It's just a black screen and he's voicing in background. So he's obviously scared to death. Listen, James, what I'm going to do, because I know you're watching, if you if you come on my channel via Zoom, porkycorner at mail.com, come on channel via Zoom and I'll send you a free porky mug for having some balls to talk about me, mate, like this. But next time... Try and put your face up instead of just a black screen and grow a pair. Nah, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm going to clean the kid up. I like the fact that his first video, he's just firing shots at one of the real monsters. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like Porky. You remember when Lomachenko made his pro debut? He's like, I want to fight for a world title in my first yeah, fight. Yeah. That's what this kid's like. He's like, I'm just going to go at Porky straight away. <laughs> but my question for you, when James comes on, my question for James is, who's he going to go after now? Like, now that he's sort of done, done Porky, like, where do you go next? took me out. There's nobody left. <laughs> you see TV and me. There's only Ultra Tech, Boxing Asylum, and, and New Age Pod left and you. <laughs> yeah, you know. I, I, wait, I, I'm dreading it. I'm, I'm ready for him when he comes to me. I am ready for him. Well, give him a <laughs> subscribe. It's called James Fernie. F-E-R-N-I-E. James Fernie. And we'll bet, make bet, him. We'll make him into an hardcore porky lover before end of year. I, I bet he's only thirteen anyway. Man, but fair play to the kid, just fair sticking play. it in there. I know he's starting <laughs> out hiding behind the camera, but you, you never know. In a couple of years, he could be in front of the camera, fronting it out. But that guy's got balls, balls on this kid. Unbelievable! <laughs> like he's got balls. He's got gonads. <laughs> <laughs> So go listen to it. It's a fantastic listen. I'm going to put it on channel, but I'll leave you to go listen to it. Get the kids some views and subscribers. So That is, yeah, fair play. Look, and I only say that for one reason. We need a lot more younger voices What's jumping in. There's nobody but, coming through, are they, like we have? Yeah, like, I, you know, like I've been saying, I, I, want, to, I want to hang it up, man. I want to retire. And, but I need the young guys to step up, man, so well, I can feel I mean, confident. he just knocked me out there, but my stock's risen. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right then. Well, listen, nice to speak to you, Terry. Good I'm speaking to you, mate. What's left of it. And I'll see yeah. you tomorrow. You take care, Yeah, mate. you take care, mate. Cheers, right, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. That's my good friend, Terry, from London. He's a banker, Terry. You don't mess about. Uh, let me just clear something up, right? Let me just clear something up. I've seen somebody slagging Terry off on a live chat the other day, right? Let me tell you this. I went to pick him up from Leeds one day and I fetched him to Cunnings, but I took him to... Kenny's for fish and chips, but he had a burger in a fish and chip restaurant. And I took him back to Leeds. But where I picked him up from in Leeds, he uh, he were doing a bank seminar. All bankers in the country came to this place. And he's all in court in the full building. And they're all there listening to him, hanging on his every word. There must have been 200 and odd people there. And he, he, he were there dealing with all that. So... He got a good job in London. He's bright as a bright as a bright as a button. Is it? Is that the word? Bright as a button. Uh, just like Rico is, and people shouldn't give him stick. All right, he's a good guy, and there's some there is people in boxing who will go to him for advice from all TV networks. I know that because I've heard back. So he didn't say anything out of out of touch. What he said to. Did somebody put? A, did he send a voice tell, a voicemail, a voice text to Danny Connor and Danny put it out, and they're all having a bit of a giggle and all that. But 
he didn't tell any lies. So if you don't believe me, go go speak to Terry and see for yourself. He don't need to prove anything, does he? He's been doing that game for years. He's university educated in Sheffield and all sorts. So, so I just thought I'd clear that up. You've got to surround yourself by good people. But getting back to these YouTubers and not, not not coming through, look, come through and have an opinion, but don't hide behind camera. I like Ultratech. He's not in front of the camera, but I know people that know him. I like UCTV. He's not in front of the camera, but probably because he's outspoken like me. But not everybody's a bit thick like me, are they? Because I'm a bit, not thick, but what's the word? A bit braver than other ones are, because I'm not really bothered about much, am I? But these other people probably do it because they don't want to put the sins out there so people know who they are. But James Fernie, you're welcome on my channel anytime. Anytime you want. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, I will put this on. I will put it on. We will put you on, James. We'll let you have your moment. Like a copper, isn't it? It's blue collar sports or whatever the guy's just been on about. Is he hiding behind camera as well, like Hatman and Sporting Icons? And this James, that guy, that guy here, they're all hiding behind cameras. Come in front of the cameras. Alexander Povetkin, for people who don't know, has an extensive yeah. Olympic background. He's an Olympic gold medalist, like Anthony Joshua, and he has a fantastic amateur record 110 percent he's come through the professional ranks and no one can doubt even in his prime that he was a world-class fighter and not not elite not not elite fighter but he has been a genuine dangerous top level fighter for years and now even at 40 
fourth one. This is just an opinion, this is not a fact. In my opinion, Povetkin is in the top five best heavyweights still in the world. In my opinion, he's a top, top fighter still at 41, even though it, it was evident in his last few fights that his footwork is starting to go and it wasn't as good as it once was. But that is one of the first things to go in a fighter, you know, when he declined in age. But getting back to my main point here, post Dillian White, Alexander Povetkin, Porky's Corner, every single video has been about Dillian White, Matt Troon, Eddie Hearn, Dean White, Adam Smith, Johnny Nelson, Spencer Oliver, etc. Now, if you don't like a certain, you know, a certain narrative spinning, for example, if you're very critical of Sky, I get that. Sky, in my opinion, haven't got very great commentators. Um, I don't like Johnny Nelson, and I don't like Spencer Oliver. Go on, lad! Um, I do think they're very biased towards... Um, Matthew fighters, and I think Macklin's commentary is a bit biased. Having said that, the constant criticism from Porky's Corner towards Adam Smith calling him lean left, right, and centre. Uh, in my opinion, I tell you what, mate, you're doing some snivelling there. You must have some good beak. But get your helmet votes in, porkycorner at mail.com. James Fernie, if you want to make helmets, get your votes in. Yeah. I just think, you know, Adam Smith, he is not biased. He is a bo hardcore boxing fan first. He's a, he's a Sky Sports presenter, commentator second. There's no doubt in his mind he is constantly praised Wilder and Fury. He always gave special mentions to up-and-coming fighters from other promotions, including Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. And of course, he praises Dillian White and Anthony Joshua, which you're allowed to do, of course. He's always been fair. He's even said he even believes Fury is the best heavyweight in the world, and he even said he didn't care if he upset Ed Hearn at one point. So how the hell do we have the likes of Porky's Corner crit having the audacity to criticise Adam Smith left, right and centre, calling him lean left, right? How dare I criticise Adam Smith? Narratives. Sorry, I haven't seen any spinning narratives from Adam Smith. For me, he's a genuine commentator and I love some of his reactions where the highlight wheel knockouts come and some dramatic happens in a fight. I think he's one of the best commentators around in my opinion. Getting on to UCTV. Now, UCTV, for some people that don't know, is a huge, huge Tyson Fury fan. He's definitely a Tyson Fury fanboy. You're a Tyson Fury fanboy? Cool. No issue with that. No issue whatsoever. You know, I mean, to, 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 get, it, to get it right with UCTV, you know, he's a Tyson Fury fanboy. I get that. But some of the things that he comes out with sometimes, it's just, some videos that he comes out with, they're just, they're totally unneeded. Why can't he be doing more videos on the likes of brilliant upcoming fights that have got nothing to do with boxing politics? Like Lomachenko against Lopez, Davis against Santa Cruz, fantastic fights. Both I'll be tuning in to watch. Kel Brook, Terence Crawford, fantastic fight. Wilder Fury Trilogy, even though Wilder got absolutely smashed in the second fight. You know, if he is going to be trained by Floyd Mayweather in the trilogy, you know, that could make things interesting. Joshua Pulev, interesting fight. Pulev definitely, for me, can give Joshua problems in the early stages. Why aren't you talking about these fights? without constantly mentioning any hurt, etc. We've covered them if you watch my videos, mate. Now, to just wrap this all off, in my opinion, Porky's Corner and UCTV, it is just an opinion. I do think they are getting paid by Frank Warren and Queensberry Promotions. I would not be surprised.
surprised at all. UCTV has claimed in the past that he's not a threat, he's not on the pe Warren payroll, and he's not being influenced by Warren at all, and that he isn't a Warren fanboy. Me personally, whenever he's been challenged about it, or he's had the opportunity to criticise Frank Warren, he's always went against it and has decided to criticise Eddie Hearn. All promoters tell lies. Eddie Hearn's told lies. True. Bob Arum's told lies. True. Frank Warren's told lies. True. So, where is UCTV Boxing criticising Frank Warren? For example, back in 2018, Fury beat Pianetta on points. In the post map, in the post ring interviews, in the ring after, um, Wilder was in the ring, Fury was in the ring, and. The, uh, the host asks, Wilder Fury, you've just said it's on. When and where will the fight take place? Warren says, all, and this I quote, I quote Frank Warren here, all will be revealed next week. Fast forward the following week, no announcements. Fast forward the following another three weeks, no announcements. Oh. Listen, James, let me just say this to you. You're obviously a rookie and you've got a lot to learn if you believe things like that, mate. But well done for bringing your video out. I'll let you have your last one minute of it, but don't be tucked in by what they say. Take some advice from me, James, and this, that's this. Whatever promoters say, think the opposite, and you're usually halfway there. Well, I've been doing this since 2017 and I've been working with Dennis since 2015, April. Do keep up, James. Eddie Hearn was doing really well and British boxing was on the up, etc. And Eddie Hearn was putting on the best shows. Where was Porky? Where was UCTV? Nowhere to be seen. It was only when they started going wrong that they thought they would kick them while they were down. <sighs> start making all these videos, etc. Hate him. Hate him. Now, I might get his fanboys come after me, the new, the new YouTube channel, and criticise me. We don't know what you look like. But literally, I don't care. Put what you want in the comments. You... This is just my opinion. Coming... You do care because you're hiding behind the camera, shooting your mouth off, you little maggot. You're a little maggot. Hiding behind the camera, look, that's your picture on camera, look, can you see it? Look, that's you hiding behind the camera. You're not, you've got, you've got your lens cover on. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your missus doesn't say that to you at night. You've got your lens cover on. Blow your nose. Used to be an AJ White fan boy. No, 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 no. Best heavyweight in the world is Tyson Fury, 110%. 110%. Well done. And for me, he's got a great pace. If he beats Wilder again, he beats Joshua twice, and he beats possibly Usyk, he has got a damn right big good claim to be in the top five best heavyweights of all time. No, he hasn't. Of no, all no. time, just to finish it off. So yeah, that is just basically me calling out Porky's Corner and UCTV's bullshit, etc, etc. 
Right, well, I'll just think on this, right, shall I, James? Dear James Fernie, F-E-R-N-I-E, a follow. And let him know what you think. Give him a follow and get him some views on that. He's trying his best. But you're not calling me out, James, because you are hiding behind the camera. We don't know what you look like, so you're not calling me out. Calling people out is when you're in front of the camera and you're saying, well, look, I'm asking you to come on my channel. Email me, porkycorner at mail.com. Send me your email address and I'll send you a link and let's have you on here so I can see what you look like. And, let, and, and you can ask me any question you want, James. All right, but don't ask, don't call people out behind the camera. If you're calling me out, come on Zoom and we can debate it. All right. Otherwise, you can be just you just you're just going to be one of them little matchroom FC gimps from Beanville Island, or a little maggot, a little matchroom maggot, matchroom FC little maggot that you are with your lens cover on. That's what you'll be if you don't come on Zoom and have it out with me in a debate. You're willing to debate with me? It's no good making little videos with 91 views. That's a week old. Come on here via Zoom, porkycorner at mail.com. All my porky followers will now text you and say, tell your email and come on here. It's no good hiding like a little maggot. Be brave and come on via Zoom. Nobody's going to get you or anything like that. All right. Now, I've got a gun now because I'm off out with something to eat and a game of snooker. It's Sunday afternoon, 20 past four. All right. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Get following James Fernie. He's the man. He's the man to follow. Go to James Fernie. Forget Adam Booth. Go to James Fernie. All right. Peace out. It's been emotional.